I never died, says he. Even if you only heard that voice once before, chances are good you recognize Paul Robeson. He was born 100 years ago today. Robeson was an actor and an activist, too, who sang the first notes of the modern civil rights movement before it even was a movement. His was a time when Jim Crow ruled a big part of America and when prejudice was as widespread as apple pie. Robeson used his voice for his beliefs in justice, equality, the rights of working people, and others. In 1949, on a triumphant tour of Europe, he changed the lyrics to his signature song, Old Man River. Tote that barge, lift that veil, you show a little grit, and you land in the chair. Instead of crying, I must keep fighting until I'm dying. And old man river, he'll just keep rolling along. A hard voice to forget. Dr. Ray Alexander Minter is the director of the Rutgers University Paul Robeson Cultural Center, and she joins us right now. Thanks for coming in today, Doctor. Thank you. We know the name Paul Robeson. Many people know the name. But I think in this day and age, perhaps some kids aren't familiar with the kind of man he was. What do people know about him in this day and age? Enough? Not enough. I think that people see, when they hear the name, they know he was a great singer, or they're not familiar at all. Certainly the students who come to Rutgers when they first come don't know him at all. By the time they leave in four or five years, he becomes very familiar to them. But he's been erased from our history books. And I think that it's now, with the centenary of his birth, I think this is a time in which those who knew him renew their acquaintance, and those who didn't know will then get to know him. Mm -hmm. What we can say about Paul Robeson is that uh, he was valedictorian at Rutgers, correct? Was correct. At Rutgers, graduated third, in 1919. Third African American to graduate from Rutgers. Mm -hmm. He was a fabulous athlete, earned many letters All -American. in many different sports. Mm -hmm. Act as we mentioned, actor, and you heard his singing. He was so popular in the 1930s and 40s specifically. Why was he erased, in your opinion? I think it's because after that, in the 40s, after the 30s, 40s, and 50s, he began to be very sympathetic to the Soviet Union and to the what he thought were the solutions to our economic problems in the United States and to the class barriers. And he thought that, that they could be resolved by our friendship with the Soviet Union, which was, of course, our enemy during the Cold War. And he was censured by the House on American Activities Committee in the 50s, and his passport was revoked, and he was unable to travel and to earn a living at his profession. And it was not uh, reinstalled, he was not, did not receive it until 1959 when the Supreme Court found in his favor. Mm -hmm. So I think that, but I think it's more than just that he was sympathetic to another government which we were not friendly with, which was Russia, but I think it's also because he was an extraordinarily charismatic, mesmerizing fig figure. And he could, Du Bois, for instance, join the Communist Party. Uh, Robeson did not. But I th and Du Bois was an intellectual, a great one, just like Robeson. But I think it's because Robeson was, as I say, mesmerizing. He I, had power. He had power. He could reach thousands and thousands of people. And I think this was not tenable, was untenable to the United States government. Mm -hmm. Do you think, had he not walked down that road, had he not... Uh, walked down the road of communism and, and that direction, he would be popular today. Popular like Martin Luther King or, or some other leaders. I think that's only part of it. I think the other part is who he was and what he believed in. And because he believed in his principles and actually died for his principles, I think that's something that young people need to know about him today. I think today when young people, particularly African American youth, are mesmerized by sports figures and their seven figure salaries, I think today when you have a man who encompasses so much intellectually gifted, a great actor, a great artist, an athlete, a humanist, a social activist, I think he becomes a role model for black and white youth, but particularly black youth today. I think one of the interesting things, too, was at the height of his career, right, in the, the pinnacle of his career, that he turned his attention to human rights and discrimination and, and fighting racism. 
I don't know a lot of people maybe in this day and age that would do that and risk everything, wouldn't you say? Exactly, and I think that that's it. It's because he grew up, he came out of the African-American uh, Episcopal Zion Church, and I think coming out, having such a strong roots in the church, believing so much in his own principles, that's something that's sorely losing. We, we, we don't have today. We have it, we've lost it, and I think that... Uh, it's because of this combination of this ex extraordinary, unique, really he is an icon. He was an icon in his day, and in his death he becomes an icon. And actually, since you mentioned his death too, it was very sad. I think people call him an American uh, success story, an American tragedy in some ways, because he fell into ill health towards the end. I think he tried to commit suicide twice also. Um, and that's very sad. It's very sad for somebody who had so much power and who, was, who had so much. Well, I should say that my parents visited him in his last day. Robeson was my grandfather's nephew by marriage, not by blood. And I would not say he was broken. I would say that he uh, realized the failures of America, but he always believed in America. In 1949, when his passport was revoked and when he was speaking in front of the, the uh, House on American Activities Committee, he said that he would never leave America, that he was always an American, an African-American, and believed very much in the principles of America. Mm -hmm. Strong until the very end, all right. To the very end. Thank you very much, Doctor, Thank for being you. with us today. Dr. Ray Alexander Minter, Director of the Rutgers Paul Robeson Cultural Center. You're watching World News Now.